Hello everybody, Spotted Gecko here again, bringing you another video for the game World of Warships Legends. And today, we're going to be doing a guide and gameplay to the Tier 4 Premium Japanese Cruiser, the Yahagi. This is what you're going to be getting from the campaign. Do a quick little pic of it here in the uh, photo mode. You can see it's a pretty good looking cruiser. It's nice. But anyways, now for this guide and gameplay, we'll be looking at the stats, the premium upgrade slots, the consumables as well as the arm reviewer and the commander I have on here for this particular build, and that is Yamamoto. Anyways, let's get started. So, we'll move out of here, and let's have a look at the upgrade slots first. Tier 4 ship gets one upgrade slot. And for this one, you have a choice of aiming system, secondary battery, or main battery. Now, I'm building, my, I'm building an accuracy dispersion build, so I really want the aiming systems for this one. But I can see a number of people going with the main battery one as well. I can't see very many people doing this one here. But aiming system is the way I'm going to go first on this one here. Okay, so let's move out of there. That's it for the upgrade slots. Let's look at the stats themselves. Now, we have a, a cruiser. She's got 25,000 uh, hull points with a very, very brittle, thin 6 to 60 mil armor on her. Artillery-wise, now this is where the ship shines here. We've got three dual 152mm guns with a firing range of 14.9 kilometers, 8.7 second reload, which is, that's pretty quick, that's pretty good, with a 30 second turret turn time, and that's pretty darn slow. HE shells, uh, you're using those quite a bit, they are 2600 in damage with a 15.5% chance of starting a fire. AP shells, you will use on the broadsides of cruisers, those are 3000 in damage. Secondary armaments, we have a 4.2 kilometer range there with uh, the uh, 76 mil guns. Those are pretty small caliber, or I should say 270. Anyways, uh, what if we go on to the next one here, which is torpedoes. Now this ship has torpedoes, which is great. And this was kind of surprising. It's got two uh, quadruple 610 mil torps, a reload time of 120. Uh, turn is pretty quick at six seconds. A max damage yield. These are Japanese torpedoes. You got a 17,000 max damage yield on them. And look at the range on this thing 12 kilometers. So you can actually make this into a oversized uh, torpedo boat as another kind of build. But I'm not making that kind of build here. I'm, I'm just pushing a accuracy dispersion build with the guns. Torpedoes are great to have, but potentially you could potentially make a. Um, a concealment torpedo build out of the ship. Maneuverability, well, she's pretty quick at 36 knots. Turn circle 690 with a with a very, very nice rudder shift of 5.1 seconds. Now look at that concealment there, 9.8 kilometers. So that means, like I was mentioning, you can be concealed while you fire off your 12 kilometer torpedoes. So that's kind of nice there. Okay, now let's move on to the arm reviewer. Now, if we look at the arm reviewer here, let's look this, turn this off. We'll look where the Citadel is at first on here. And that will help determine us how we're going to play the ship. Right off the bat, you see how high that Citadel sits above the water. So you are highly vulnerable from your smokestack all the way down to the start of your rear turret there. That is vulnerability sitting way above the waterline. Plus, underneath that turret to your... Uh, to your forecastle there, it does sit below the water, but you're still vulnerable. You've got a blue uh, Citadel plate there, which if we look at it, is uh, which is 20, uh, 20 millimeters thick, so that's rough too. At least there's some side plating on this one, where we have a 60 mil uh, belt along there, which is helpful. Now if we take it out of that, let's go down over to here, and let's have a look at the uh, fore and aft armor, and you can see it's uh, pretty thin at uh, 20 mils we got that light blue color there that is pretty darn thin so first off let's do uh, um, aft in plating we're looking at uh, the deck itself 13 to 20 mil as well as the aft in plating 13 to 20 mil there ouch okay so if you go to the four four end plating is 13 to 20 mil All right and we've got four in deck itself. It's the same thing, 13 to 20 miles. So basically, the ship is pretty brittle. You've got to be aware of that when you're playing this. Now, overview-wise, it's got big yield. Yes, it does. Above average torpedo damage. So like I said, this could become an interesting torpedo build. 
And then if we look at the next one here, we have fast, above average max movement speed. And you're going to have to utilize that to survive in this ship. And narrow launch, there's a limited maximum spread of your torpedo launcher. And yes, it is. You have to be pretty much broadside to use it. It's uh, The Yahagi is one of the Agano-class light cruisers, a new generation of ships designed to replace cruisers built in the 20s. She was relatively small, quick, and sported powerful torpedo armament. So in a way, she's basically a really oversized uh, torpedo boat. Anyways, let's move out of here. Let's do a quick look at the consumables. This ship does a little bit of everything. First off, you got your damage control, but you've got sonar on this, which goes out to uh, potentially a 3.7 kilometer range to detect those ships. And if it's active, you can detect those torpedoes up to 2.7. You've got yourself an, a catapult fighter. This is not an observation plane. You can use it like that, but it only has a, a minute and a half duration in the air. And you've also got an engine boost on here, which is kind of nice as well. And uh, the, the ship does come with its own flag, which I haven't got yet. Okay, so <clears throat> there we have that. Now, the commander I'm using on here right now is I am going to be using a Yamamoto. Now, I would also recommend a Togo on here. I want to get my Togo up in level to at least a level 14 because I think her arsonist ability on here, as well as the stealth torpedo ability, would be a really good fit for this ship. For now, we're going to have Yamamoto on here, since he's my highest cruiser commander I've got. And we're going to place Makawa as an inspiration on here, because Makawa's got that reduction in detectability of cruisers, bringing it down at minus 3%, why it's at 9.8 right now. And then we're also going to make use of Scott, which is usual for most people, giving us that uh, good shell grouping. His base trait for Yamamoto is right through, giving my AP shells a point, uh, I should say a 3.9% uh, penetration multiplier. And we're also going to pick, because we want range on this ship. So we're going with the beyond range, giving us that plus 10% to our range. And then we're going to pick the igniter here to give us the plus 2.5% to our HE shells. Then we're going to go with punch through with a plus 5% to our AP shells, as well as another plus 3% to our AP shell penetration multiplier. And lastly, we're going to make fixated, giving us even better shell grouping, as well as better dispersion. And for our legendary skill, we're going to go with refill station, allowing me to gain another 10% to the range of my guns. Because I really wanted to get the range on here. Because I'm pra like I said, my build for the uh, Yahagi right now is an accuracy dispersion build. Okay, so there we have it. That is what we have so far. And now we're going to take this ship out into a standard match. And we're going to see how well this Tier 4 Premium Cruiser from Japan, the Yahagi work. So please stick around for that. Okay, well, thank you for sticking around to watch this match with the Yahagi. It's going to be in the fault line in a domination game. Now, do note the match is pre-recorded. I'm doing the audio over top of it afterwards. And also that this is not a fabulous Kraken or six or seven sinking match or great gameplay. No, this is what you can expect in a standard average match that you are going to have with the Yahagi. So here we are. This is the Yahagi here. Like I mentioned, this is with the Yamamoto on board. The Yamamoto is only a level 12. I do want to uh, e eventually have Otago on here. But for now, Yama Yamamoto is going to have to make do. So here we are. With the uh, fault line, we're going up against a couple of destroyers, a bunch of cruisers, and a bunch of battleships. Now, the Yahagi is a very brittle boat. You're going to have to be very careful when you play this thing. You will get sink a lot in it. So, it takes a bit to get her up to speed because there's no propulsion mod because it's only a tier 4 ship. So you can't choose a propulsion mod. So we want to keep this thing moving as much as possible. That would be the key. And what would be great is you want to make use of your AP rounds when you're going up against cruisers that show you their broadside because it really does work well. Now, they do have 12 kilometer torpedoes on here. And I don't think I'm going to be utilizing them in this match. This one's just going to showcase the guns on it, I believe. But uh, we will fire the torpedoes, but they won't connect. But the guns certainly do connect in this one. I love the fact that the ship has got sonar. It's got the uh, catapult fighter that only goes up for a minute and a half. And it's also got the speed boost, which is nice too. Now we're looking over there. We've got an Aobo over there. We're just going to take a Hail Mary shot here. There they go. You can see I slowed it right down again. And we're at quarter speed. It does take a bit to get this baby up and moving. So Now, so we're going to be dealing with an Aoba and an Emerald. We are going to be duking it out with those guys in the next uh, minute or two. 
and uh, the uh, the Yahagi performs really well. Now I've played this Yahagi now probably maybe uh, 10, maybe 15 matches worth, and I definitely, like I mentioned, want to put you, um, a Togo on here. I think her Arsenal skill would be a really good fit for this ship, but also. I might toy around with making this into a torpedo build just for the fun of it because we got those 12 kilometer torps on here and a 9.8 or so concealment which you can get down if you use Makawa and all that. That should be pretty cool as well. So we'll have to see how that pans out. But anyways, let's uh, keep going with this match here. We do have a cruiser and destroyer over here helping us out and I think the battleship is running away. That was on that side but we're coming in there to help out. So our first dealings will be with the Emerald and the Aeoba, like I mentioned. Now, we are going at a pretty good clip here. I think that's 36 or 37 knots that's running right now. Engine boost deactivated. This certainly is a light cruiser. Now, okay, there is the Emerald. Now, we do have HE at the moment. It really would be much better to fire AP on it, but because it's going right behind the island, it don't have time to switch. We did get a fire started, so... It doesn't take too much to get a fire started, which is kind of nice. Unless they got heavy fire resistance, like a battleship. Right? So we're going to take another shot here. I think we're going to miss with that one. Yeah, we did miss with that. Now, it did go in the cloud there. Now, I have to remember that my sonar is only detects ships up to around 3.5, 3.7 kilometers. Got a lot of torpedoes coming through there, so there must be a torpedo boat around as well. And we just lost our, our own torpedo boat there. He just drove right into a torpedo. And now we've got a Dallas with us. So the two of us are going to take care of the uh, what's around here. And so that's our that's our job right now. <laughs> we're already, we've already lost our destroyer, so we have a disadvantage on our team because of that. Now we're not going to generate a massive score here. But we are going to generate a good amount of cap, a good amount of credits with this ship, so that's kind of nice. It does a little bit of everything in this match, so that's why it's that's a that's why it's a match I picked. Okay, now there is the uh, Emerald. I wonder if we can get a shot on it here. <coughs> Excuse me with that. Okay, nope, we can't get a shot on it. Now we do have AP running right now. We did switch over to AP. We're going to take a shot on the Yoba even though he's starting to, to uh, bank away, which means we're not going to get a good connection on him if we hit him. So we got a penetration, which was good, and we got our first defending ribbon there, which is nice. The Dallas is taking a little bit of heat there from the Yoba. Okay, now my thought process right now was the fact that I thought maybe the Emerald's going to come out right on this side here, but it doesn't do that. There are some torps in the water there behind us. And there's the New York class battleship out there, so we're safe from that for the moment. Aoba's got smoke up. And I'm thinking, where the heck did that emerald go? Did it turn around and going back towards, or, it's, or is it moving away from us? Okay, now there's the Yoba, so we're going to take a shot on the Yoba here. Now we're going to be facing the Yoba and the emerald at the same time here. Okay, now there's the Emerald. We have a half decent shot on the angle of its hull there. And so we should be, there is our first Citadel right there. And there's our two more Citadels right there. You can see how nicely the ship can Citadel cruisers. Look how, look how narrow that torpedo thing is right there, right? That's pretty darn narrow. Okay, now we're gonna start uh, duking out on the uh, Aoba here. We got a Citadel there. So pretty much every shot you get into the hull of a cruiser seems to get a Citadel. Which is not good at that. Four more citadels right there. So yeah, it does really hit the hulls well of broadside cruisers, slightly angled cruisers. Now we're gonna have a hard time damaging it. We're just kind of dodging torpedoes there because we know we're gonna fire them. So we slowed down and sped up after a moment. And now we're gonna do AP on a highly angled hull, and you can see they're bouncing a lot of them there. So it would have been better probably to switch to uh, HE here, but we really didn't have the time. We're just going to keep hammering away with our AP because I'm kind of experimenting with it. And uh, we should be able to sink that ship. Now, there's going to be more torps in the water coming. You got a ship turned around. You saw these shells just kind of bounce there. And that fire is going to kill it. We're not going to get the sinking here, but we should. And there they go. 
And there goes the ship right there. Okay, so basically we uh, sunk that Aoba, even though in the end we didn't. Now our next goal here is to uh, head over towards that New York. It's at range. <clears throat> And our goal is to get that New York set on fire and maybe get within range so we can send our torpedoes after it. So we got to get the ship moving first. But so far, we've gotten a lot of a variety that this ship has accomplished so far in this match. We got 29,000 in damage. However, we got secondary hits, incapacitations, we got sinkings, we got uh, capture flags, we got shot down a plane, we got a lot of citadels, and uh, we've also got some. Uh, <clears throat> Sorry, excuse me again. We're going to move along here. Now we just got a, another ribbon there, which is great. We're going to move along here and uh, keep this ship moving at top speed. Every time we touch the rudder, a rudder we bleed off about three, four knots. Now we're, we're down to three ships. There's uh, myself, the Dallas, and we also have a battleship sitting out there somewhere. They've got a destroyer still, as well as three more ships. So, thinking, eh, odds are not too looking too good for us here. Because you see they still have that destroyer. Okay, now there is the uh, New York class battleship. And it just so happens that he is within range of my torpedoes. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to launch both uh, sets of torpedoes here. Got a, uh, yeah, you see that? You got to be so broadside to use this. The only thing I don't like about that, like perfectly broadside to be able to uh, buy the torps off. So you got to be really sure that there's no battleship or anybody targeting you, cruiser or otherwise, before you launch those torpedoes. Okay, now there goes the shells right now. And we got the hit and the fire right on the first shell there. Another fire. We got uh, a bunch of fire started on it. And then he got hammered by a uh, battleship there. And then we're going to put our fire in there and we sink him right there. Lots of fires were started by this uh, Yahagi on that, um, on that uh, New York class battleship. So we had a really good... That was just kind of lucky. Got in the end though. Pretty good, that was pretty good accuracy there, too, from this dispersion accuracy build. I was actually surprised with that. At that kind of range, I thought there were, a lot of them were going to fall like all around the water around it, but no, a lot of them hit the ship. So that was kind of nice. We're at 37,000. And now um, we just got myself on the Dallas left. There's another battleship off to my left. There's the Dallas right there. He just got blown up, and now we are the last one. Now I'm trying to think, okay, now... We have the uh, spotter plane up there. It's still flying, so that's why we can see the Normandy at the moment behind the island. Now, we're going to take a shot on that Normandy. Kind of a Hail Mary there. We kind of have an idea where he is. Destroyer is going to... Yep, there's a the destroyer off to my right there. Now, my thought process here is, well, maybe I can get in there and uh, take out that destroyer with my guns. But you know what? I completely forgot about the battleship that's off to my left. You can't see it right now. But it's a Fuso. I completely forgot about it. It's sitting in open water, and he is going to hammer me. Because I wasn't doing my map awareness, it's going to cost me. <laughs> and like I mentioned, this ship is brittle, especially to battleship guns. And there we go. And then I go, oh, crap. <laughs> there it is. There is a big battleship sitting out there. I'm thinking, okay, my only chance right now is to run for it to get within the gap there between this island and that battleship. And I'll just take some shots at the uh, destroyer here when I'm down to practically nothing. So those destroyer guns are gonna wipe me out. Like even destroyer guns are gonna just annihilate you. Like I'm giving them a broadside and that should, and there you have it. That is what's gonna happen lots when you play this ship. You are gonna get blown up, but you will have good matches in it. Anyways, let's have a look overall how we did in the game. And the stats are coming up, 262 credits, that's really good, 38,000. And uh, overall, a lot of Citadels in that one. Well, there you have it, guys. If you enjoyed this, please give me a like. And, of course, it would be wonderful if you would subscribe to my channel for future videos on World of Warships Legends. Until next time, this is Spotted Gecko Gamer. I'll see you on the seas.